qualitative researchers. Have you ever found yourself saying these things? Have I got enough interviews? Is it okay to say that a lot or most of my participants felt this way or did this thing? What do validity and reliability actually mean when it comes to qualitative research? Is my research, shock horror, biased? And you probably heard or felt this next one too. This unspoken assumption that quantitative research is somehow better or more rigorous or just more scientific than qualitative research. And as a qualitative researcher, you have probably found yourself wondering, am I doing this right? Is this real research? Should I be chucking a few quantitative things in here to just make it sound better? If that sounds familiar, this video is for you. Qualitative and quantitative research are different, not hierarchical. They serve different purposes, they ask different questions, and they use different tools to generate different kinds of knowledge. And today, I'm going to walk you through those key differences. So you can stop judging your qualitative work by the wrong standards. And you can start feeling a bit more confident in what you're doing. I'm Dr Elizabeth Yardley and I help PhD students get out of their own heads, stop spiralling and just take the next step. So if you're a qualitative researcher who's a little bit meh at the moment, let's get into it. Let's start here. Qualitative and quantitative research do not have the same goals. Quantitative research typically asks how much, how many, is there a relationship between this thing and that thing? Can this be generalised? It's about measurement, correlation, prediction, testing hypotheses. Qualitative research, on the other hand, asks things like, how do people experience this? What does this mean to them? What are the underlying processes, stories or patterns? It's about meaning, understanding, context and depth. So if you're asking rich exploratory questions about things like culture, identity, meaning, guess what? You are not doing the soft version of quantitative work. You're doing the right method for your questions. That's it. A lot of PhD students doing qualitative work feel a bit second class. They feel a bit less than because their work doesn't involve numbers. Their work doesn't involve statistics. But here's a wild thought. Not every research problem can or should be solved with numbers. Some experiences can't be reduced to variables or Likert scales. And anything that tries to do so just kind of takes the complexity out of them. It takes the nuance out of them. So if you're a qualitative researcher and you're doubting that your research is rigorous, we need to perhaps reframe what we mean by rigorous. It can mean spending weeks wrestling with messy data, developing themes and reflexively engaging with how your own position shapes the analysis. That is intellectual heavy lifting. Just because it doesn't involve SPSS doesn't mean it's any less valid. It doesn't mean it's any less important. You're just doing a different kind of thinking, a different kind of research, but one that still counts. Get in the comments on this if you haven't already. If you're a qualitative researcher, have you ever found yourself comparing your work to quantitative standards? Have you ever downplayed your work because it doesn't have numbers in it, because it doesn't have statistics in it? Or maybe you've got a real sense of pride in the research that you do, share that too. There are other people who really need to hear that, so get typing. This is a big one. Quantitative research often aims for objectivity. Distancing the researcher from the data. Minimising bias. Using standardised measures. That is a totally valid approach for some questions. But qualitative research acknowledges that we as researchers are part of the process. Our experiences, our assumptions, all of those things shape the way that we interpret data. So qualitative researchers think objectivity, like total objectivity, is an illusion. 
and pretending that objectivity is possible, that is something that hides your influence rather than accounting for it. So instead of aiming for objectivity, qualitative researchers aim for reflexivity. Being transparent, honest and thoughtful about how you're engaging with your data. Reflexivity isn't a flaw, it's a feature of qualitative research. It's what makes your work trustworthy and insightful through that element of transparency. And if you've ever been confused about the difference between reflexive and reflective, I will pop a link to a video on the screen right now that you might find helpful. I'll also pop the link to that down in the description. Here's why so many qualitative researchers trip themselves up. Because they're judging their qualitative work by quantitative standards. Let me be really clear. You do not need a huge sample. You're not trying to achieve generalizability. You're not looking for statistical significance. Instead, the things that you're aiming for include thematic saturation rather than sample size, which means you've spoken to, you've engaged with enough people to start seeing the same themes coming up again and again. It's not about how many participants you've got. It's about whether your data is rich enough to enable you to start seeing patterns and start seeing themes. You're looking for trustworthiness rather than replicability. Your findings make sense. They are grounded in the data and you're clear about how you got to them. You're not aiming for the same results every time. You're aiming for honesty and transparency and a strong argument. Transparency and credibility come from your reflexive notes, thick description and some clear audit trails. If you're writing a findings chapter and panicking because you only interviewed 10 people, if you did a deep, meaningful and thoughtful analysis, that's fine. That's enough. So where does the whole quantitative qualitative hierarchy come from? Because academic life started around the natural sciences, physics, chemistry, biology, where quantitative methods are often seen as the gold standard, especially in disciplines like that where measurement is king. But qualitative researchers, we are asking different questions. Rather than trying to measure, we're trying to understand. Like identity, stigma, care, culture. And these things are not easily quantifiable. And when you try and flatten them down into variables, into categories, you lose the very thing that you're trying to study. So if you've ever felt less than because your research doesn't involve a regression or the chi-square test or t-test or p-values, please remember this. You are not less rigorous. You're not less academic. You're not less anything. You're doing research that looks at people in their messy, complicated, beautiful depths. And the world needs that. If you enjoyed this video, there's another one popping up on your screen right now that I think you'll also like. It's a much deeper dive into all things qualitative. So if you're a qualitative researcher or if you're a quantitative or mixed methods researcher and you want to learn more about qualitative research, go and check it out. I'll see you in there.